I'm Chris Ransom. This is your 2016 NHL Draft Update. The 2015 NHL Draft has wrapped up, and it was one of the deepest and best in years. The 2016 NHL Draft has some talent at the top 10 that may match, possibly rival, but won't be as strong as last year's class. But after that, there is kind of a drop-off. But today, we'll go over the top 10 players in our pool of prospects. The one guy that stands out on tape has to be USA center Austin Matthews. Matthews broke Patrick Kane's record of 117 points last season as Kane only scored 102 on Team USA before going to the London Knights in the Ontario Hockey League. Matthews has the versatility to play left wing center or right wing at the NHL at the next level. There's a lot to like about Matthews as he's the number one overall prospect for good reason. The downside to Matthews is that he will be playing for the ZSC Lions in Europe. Likely. However, one thing that could keep him from playing is the fact that he doesn't have a work permit or passport that allows him to travel overseas. If that's the case, his next option will be to play for the Everett Silver Tips in the Western Hockey League. We saw Seth Jones go from the United States Hockey League to the Western Hockey League a few years ago and make that transition. Expect Matthews to go there as a plan B if things don't work out. Plan C will likely be to go to a college for a year or return to Team USA. However, I think the ZSC Lions are his primary option with the Everett Silvertips as his backup option. There are two other players that could challenge Matthews for the top pick. These guys are practically locks to go second and third, barring injury. The first player is Jesse Puljujarvi. The other player is Sarnia Sting defenseman Jacob Chaitron. Jesse Puljujarvi led the Ulan Karpat squad in the SM Liga team to two consecutive championships in the SM Liga League. Jacob Chaitron was the number one overall draft pick in the 2014 OHL Priority Selection. The most impressive thing about Chaitern is the way he handled himself. After De Anthony D'Angelo, a 2014 first-round pick, got traded from Sarnia to the Salt St. Marie Greyhounds, Chaitern continued to embrace his leadership role as a number one defender on this top line after being the number two defenseman on this top line as a rookie. You really saw Chaitern come into his own, and his excellent leadership got him promoted to alternate captain. Having 33 points in his first season is something for him to look back on and be proud of as that play and leadership could get him, will likely get him drafted in the top three overall and could get him drafted number two or number one overall. The other, after those top three players, anything could happen. But I think the most interesting thing to point out is Sean Day, who is most likely to challenge um, Chichern for the top spot. Sean Day has better size than Chichern at 6'2", 219 pounds. The biggest issue is his minus 35 plus minus ratio and minus 27 plus minus ratio in two seasons with the Mississauga Steelheads. That concerns scouts and makes you wonder if his primary ability is to be a offensive defenseman. He had six goals, 10 assists, 26 points in 2013-2014 and followed it up with 10 goals, 16 assists and 26 points in 2014-2015. We know this guy, Sean Day, is an offensive defenseman, but he needs to show scouts a refined defensive game, the ability to block shots, the ability to hit hard, and he needs to do it this season because if he can't, you have to wonder if he's a top 10 pick rather than a top 5 pick. The final player battling it out for a spot in the top 5 overall are the top 2 picks in the 2013 WHL Bantam Draft. Those players were... Tyler Benson of the Vancouver Giants. And Sam Steele, the center of the Regina Pats. Joshua 
a Hosang got traded from the Windsor Spitfires to the Niagara Ice Dogs. The reason I'm bringing this up is because 2016 NHL draft prospect Logan Brown Yeah, Logan Brown began the season as a line two center behind Joshua Hosang. And once the Niagara Ice Dogs traded for Hayden McCool and they dealt Joshua Hosang, that enabled Logan Brown to remain on the second line. And he should be a line two guy. And I think he'll stay in Windsor until McCool goes to the AHL or until he gets called up to the first line, despite his immense talent. Still, he should go in that first round, and Kiefer Bellows out of the Sioux Falls Stampede Bellows led the Sioux Falls Stampede to the USHL Championship to help them win the Clark Cup. He'll probably go to the United States National Team Developmental Program to replace Austin Matthews, who would have been a top three pick to the Arizona Coyotes most likely had he been eligible for this year's NHL draft. Matthews was two days off of being eligible for the upcoming NHL draft in 2015 that just took place this weekend. Your team USA has two guys that are likely to head to the London Knights. The first of those two players is Max Jones and Matthew Kachuk. He is the son of Keith Kachuk. Both Matt, J Max Jones and Matthew Kachuk, the son of Keith Kachuk, are likely headed to the London Knights. If either one returns to USA, they'll have a chance to do something as a line one guy, but I'm guessing both players will split minutes. And it's been reported that if Mitch Marner returned to the London Knights after being selected fourth overall by the Toronto Maple Leafs, he would be the team captain next season. So having Marner, Jones, and Kachuk all on the London Knights next season would make this team very deadly, despite the loss of Max Domi, who I, the Coyotes took 13th overall in back in 2013. Will these top 10 prospects remain the top 10 players leading up to next year's NHL draft? Stay tuned. Chris Ransom, Draft Utopia.